Good evening. Welcome to the Grosio Township Community Recreation Commission meeting, April 25th, 2013. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Born and unborn for Bill Martin. Okay. I need a motion for the approval of tonight's agenda. Barring there are no additions, deletions. Um, if so, I need a motion, please. Second, please. And all those in favor, say aye. Aye. Uh, Mike Swales. Yeah. Uh, the approval of the minutes dated February 28, 2013. Were there any additions, deletions, any kind of changes? If not, I need a motion to approve those minutes, please. I approve. Ethel, second. second. Helena, all those in favor say aye. 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 I just have a comment. Yes. Um, <laughs> Ethel pointed out to me that it's the ops, um, what is it, the gazebo? Pavilion. Pavilion. Pavilion at the recreation hall. I just wanted it to be Yop's recreation building, so I made a mistake last time. It's been fixed. Boy, those Yops want everything over there, don't they? <laughs> no, I didn't. She gave it to me. <laughs> All right, public comment, three minute limit on non agenda items. Any public comment? Sandy, Kathy, Sandy? Sandy's got me. Name and address, please. Sandy Bondar, um, 20135 Canal Drive. And I have an agenda or a, an announcement. Um, we are having our annual barn farm cleanup again, May 11th, from 10 o'clock to 2 p.m. Um, there'll be pizza and pop, and things will be provided. And we could really use some uh, support of everyone out there if they can please come and help us take care of this. Beautiful piece of property. Okay, once again, Saturday, May 11th, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Centennial Farm. Yes. Right. There'll be painting, um, washing windows, cleaning, all of the above. All right, great. Thank you so much, Sandy. Oh, Sandy, uh, will all the materials and supplies be provided, or does yes. do people need to bring their own paintbrushes? Or? No, but please wear clothes that can get paint on them, because we will be painting, so... And uh, dress appropriately. We've had quite a bit of rain, so it is kind of muddy out there. So, so. wear some boots. Wear some boots. Okay, thanks, Sandy. And we donations have, we have are welcome. Donations and everything. Donations yes. are welcome. Yes. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, any other public comment? Kathy? Name and address, please. Kathy Walker, 26051 Thorpe Court. Uh, first of all, thank you for the opportunity uh, tonight to talk to you. I'm here to share some information about the We Kayak Group. Uh, it started uh, in uh, February on that cold night, and we, uh, we addressed uh, an issue that has been going on a lot at, at the township that, that we want a place to launch our kayaks. So I put up a Facebook page, and we've been monitoring it, and I have some information, and I'll put this here so you can see it. It's real quick. Just to see what kind of feedback we're getting and interest. Uh, basically, we have 58% of our activity from females, 42% from males. Got it, Walt. 58% uh, uh, of the interested parties are 45 and over. Uh, we don't have a lot of time to wait. <laughs> we, we need that kayak launch. Uh, we're interested kayakers uh, come from 14 communities in Michigan and one in Florida. So there's, there's hope for people to move. Uh, there is a momentum and a real genuine excitement at the pro prospect of a kayak launch at Water's Edge. We have um, the added benefit of Riverside Kayak Connection. There are professional staff leading our paddles. We'll do this at no cost, but we have to have a place to launch. Um, and that's a big benefit because over the weekends they charge. They charge to take people on paddles. And this way you have a professional group that will take you out. They charge for paddles and turn the weekend. Uh, we need a kayak launch as opposed to a kayak dock. And a kayak launch, there are, there's a whole bunch of different ones, but I just thought I'd show you what I'm talking about. It's got that little tongue in there so that you can put your kayak in and scoot out. That's the law, and it's close to the water, so you don't fall in. Um, it would be. It has an overhead assist bar uh, right here, 
And that would really be useful for everyone, including participants with ADA needs. Uh, our um, I thank the Red Commission for letting me speak, and I look forward to decisions regarding a kayak launch for Brosil that will meet the seasonal demands in the co most cost-effective manner. So, just thank you. Any questions? Okay. All right. Thank you, thank Kathy. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> All right, moving on. Chairperson's report, the question center lease. All right, pleased to announce that we did sign the lease with the Lutons. That was at the first of this month. So this that is complete. Um, the one that's in question, I believe, Tim, is the tractor. Unless you have some further information, is the tractor agreement signed? Do you know about that one? Yeah, talk? they signed, signed both documents. You sure? Because Dale wasn't sure about that, the second one. I'm pretty confident they did. Okay, well, we're going to go to the assumption they did, but I will confirm for you guys. I'm sorry I didn't have that earlier. But the most important thing is the lease is signed. All the, all the three things that, um, that we were hoping to get, you know, the main things, it did occur. No changes. So everything that this commission actually uh, voted on the last meeting that we, you know, get this thing moving, I think it really helped you guys. So I really appreciate that, uh, that, 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 that vote there. Um, any questions on the question center lease at all? I have a question. Yes. Does it go for five years or does it go for four when the master plan is done? It, it's went for five, correct? It ends in 2017 and then there's an um, opportunity to renew. Right. Okay. okay. So when is the master plan done, right? Master plan 2016. Okay. End of 2016. So it didn't coincide like we wanted to with the start, but... So it's just a five-year plan, right? Right. Okay. Any other questions? All right, moving on to the update, the restaurant lease. The restaurant lease, it's, 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 it's right now, it's a month-to-month -month lease, so that's where we're at right now. Nothing's changed with that. It's a month-to-month. -month. Um, we will be talking more in executive session at the end of this meeting, and we'll all be able to share more about this, uh, about this lease program, okay? Um, any questions about that? All right, moving on. Recreation Director's Report. Tim got quite the list here, and it's draft day, so. I know. Hope Manti goes to the Lions. Who? Who? Manti Tail. What, you want everyone in? in I, believe, I believe Manti Tail. I just want to be on record. Okay. I think he did it his girlfriend, too, once, right? Who, Lene? Is she right next to you? Leave Lene out of this. Anyway, excuse me. Drainage product you, project update. Yep, we've been, you've been getting updates on the drainage projects for quite a while at the Farm and Water's Edge. Um, based on a recommendation from the administration, we did approach the DPS staff, and they encouraged us to appear before the DPS commission with our drainage uh, projects. We went before them two weeks ago. They were very supportive of the dog park playground area next to the recreation building and the two ponds, three and nine at Water's Edge. Um, brought it before the township board and Tom and the board were very supportive and I wanted to thank the DPS Commission because they were very welcoming and supportive during that meeting the board was also supportive knowing that those are important recreation. So right system. now we're moving forward then gentlemen with this then? Is that what yep, I, uh, took me till the day to notify Sile but he probably already knew that that was approved by the board, sent him the packet. So once again everyone this is the dog park the drainage, the east side of the rec building right? And by the playscape a little bit over there too, right? Correct, yeah. It, it kind of stretches into yeah, that right. play area. Okay. All right. Any questions on the on the drainage? Mr. Chair, Tim, does that affect the ponds on the golf course, or is that different? It, is, it deals directly with the ponds. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's right, the golf course. But yeah. is it all rolled into that one too, with the ponds? Yeah, there was four that they approved, four okay. separate, and they had different prices in engineering. You two ponds that you're going to dredge out. Right, right. Okay, cool. All right, that's great. Because we, because the that really helps for knowing our budget, that thirty-eight thousand, and how many people use the farm, the dog park, playground, and the building is really huge. And more people are using Water's Edge than just golf too, so it's very helpful. That's outstanding. Okay, because initially, you guys, we thought we were going to have to do this like in uh, uh, phases and stuff. So, all right, cool. All right, summer program update. Yep, and that's working very hard on channels. We're getting closer. We're hoping within the next probably another week, and then we'll have information from the community groups. We're waiting for a few instructors to get a hold of us. Um, I've updated you on, the, if anybody has any questions on the Golf Pro programs that I gave last month, they're available on cable um, in the rec department at the farm, in the newspaper recreation notes. Um, the Senior Olympic, well, I'm going to let John handle that because there's things commissioners are working on, but I think we're going to have a great uh, summer offering. Um, we met with the 
Historical Society and um, Missy Bringard and Tammy Teller have a new historical camp they're working on. And the Historical Society will be offering that at the farm, which is pretty exciting. So hmm. that's hmm. A, a new camp I think will be great. And then, uh, oh yeah, I keep wanting to go over in the areas where the commissioners are going to cover. So. All right, any more questions on the summer program? <clears throat> All right, update on the waterfront park. And and I just met. She'll cover that in a few moments. Um, facility uh, maintenance projects. Let me run through these real quick. Um, we'll go over the Parkway Road. Any Brian's been down there cleaning up more glass as it's come to the surface, um, litter, that type of thing that's going on. Um, we'd like to get a bench down there, but we'll go more into that. Uh, seawall, we just repaired, or not seawall, the marina, we filled, uh, just repaired several downboards and tightened them up, but there's one dock where the guys think we need to take them all off and put new ones on. We tightened them down, so we're looking at that. I did get a quote on painting the marina, but okay. I'll, you know, I'll go through the process here at the township. May wait this year, but it's, uh, I think, a pretty good price. Pool, um, we're going to be changing up with our pool um, contractor that opens and closes the pool and does the weekly monitoring. I have somebody coming on the weekend to kind of assist the guards to keep the chemistry and, you know, everything going good with that. It's going to be Aero Motor there in Wyandotte. They do quite a few pools, and they're also the same company that we use to repair our impellers. They're a good business, solid business, and their quote came in uh, – Nice for so us. So it's going to basically stay the same or cost savings? Or? Uh, right now it looks like a cost savings. We'll see what the, how the pool goes this year. But um, mechanically, we're going to be much stronger in that pool uh, room, okay. you know, with the filters and the, the heaters and things like that. I'm, I'm excited about that. Not to put down the past person. Got us through some hard times. But um, dealing with Aeromotor and their quote, I think we've got a good uh, company coming in. We'll see how it goes this year. Okay. You know, we try to look at that every year. So. Well, that's with the pool. Basketball court, we need some new padding for the backboards. Um, range, we have to buy a new net this year. It's going over into the fairway eight, so we got to buy, buy a no, new No net. chance to repair this? we got to get the No, hole. it's gone. It's old. It's time. So I got probably Do nine. we take down that netting at all in the winter at all? We don't do it. No. Sometimes we take the volleyball court down. That's down when they moved it, so that's going back up. Um, that's um, the, the net. We have to replace all that along there. And that's probably that's the biggest thing on the range. The farm, obviously, we're going to be doing fencing. Um, we're going to be repairing the upper barn door that people brought up uh, probably sometime this weekend or beginning of next weekend. Um, what else? Oh, we just did the aluminum side or the siding on the barn all the way around. We painted that. No, we replaced it. We like replaced we it. All the rust is gone now. Okay. And then what we'll be doing probably within the next five days is we haven't done it in several years. We put the heavy slag down on the main roadway and around the barns, so that'll be done. So before the cleanup, that'll be nice. <laughs> so that's that's a big thing. And then we'll be working with the equestrian uh, club with the maintenance and then our ongoing. So, um, let's see here. I got a question about the entrance at the at the rec building down there. Okay. We had those posts and stuff like that, and they're all rotted, and they get, we moved all that. Are, do we have any plans at all to make that little look, look a little bit nicer at all? Or You mean right where you go in? Mm-hmm. That's something we can look at. There, people are always bringing that. Right now there's two mats laying there in a hay bale that just doesn't look too good. Okay. We'll get that, and that was complaining about that. Today. <laughs> I said, Tim, can you get that out there? Yeah, I said, we'll get it out there. I apologize for that. Um, the playscape, um, you got some information on that, and Ann will cover that, too. We'll go over the playscape. That's always moving along there. You know, when we talked about go back to that drainage thing, how was that pond at the farm? Low, low right now. You have to fill that. That's not yeah, a natural not pond. Spread that's spread by, started with a hose. Yeah. <laughs> so are we going to be filling we, it this we year? We filled it last summer. We'll fill it again. Firemen, right? Yeah, we do. The, well, we do the fire holes, and we mo right. Brian monitors it. Okay. I have a question. Moving back to um, Water's Edge, when did you? I've been asked when will the volleyball court be? Will it be, and when will it be put up? Um, volleyball court is scheduled. These are scheduled to start the uh, third week in May. So, okay. Um, Mark did some work on the outer edge and topsoiled it, and I'm worried about the level of the sand right now. And my hope was to change the sand over, get rid of the older sand. We have some volleyball people bring in Osborne. They do quite a bit of sand volleyball courts. They deal with that kind of material. 
And I got calls from our volleyballers today that um, there's two really nice courts. One's in Northville, and they use the same company. So I'm probably going to take some of that existing sand out. But we're, our leagues are being advertised, and we're so we're, right. yeah, we're going to be ready this spring. And you'll have the new sand in. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping to have the sand in, but hopefully before the league starts. It'll okay. be a lot much easier than waiting. So yeah, okay. It's coordinating all these different projects. So. Um, let's see here. Island Fest update. We're in full throttle. Oh, wait, wait. Any, any more questions on the maintenance product okay. updates? I'm sorry. Anyone have any more questions on that? Okay, go ahead. Then Island Fest. Just to give you a brief outlook on, or a brief update on what we're doing with Island Fest, I'm just going to go down real quick. Remember, it's all, you get to this point, the commission's done their planning, it's coordinated through our office. Example, beverage vendor, we're having a little bit of problem. The vets are um, because you send in an application every year, the food vendors are inside with the beer tent, they're having a little bit of a problem and what I'm trying to explain to the, the state is we invite the vendors in, we have a whole separate uh, application guidelines that they have to give to us as the beer beverage does. It's not the beverage inviting them, or the VFW inviting them in. So that's that's something I've been trying to... I mean, we've been doing this for years, why all of a sudden now is there... I, well, it'll, we'll clear it up. I mean, I haven't had uh, our police chief call, but usually when he calls, he can clear it up quick and uh, okay. reassure him. I, I don't think it'll be a problem. I'm just kind of giving you things that we're working on in the department. Carnival's pretty well set. I mean, you have to call ahead of time for um, mistake for any kind of wires or lines underneath. The parade constantly coming in, people changing their mind, getting the parade set up, sending the parade mailings back out of their spots. Entertainment, that's always a uh, moving thing. Fireworks, we did a walkthrough this morning with um, monster trucks, fireworks, exotic cars, fast track, they're the Lamborghini type thing. They'll all pretty much service out of the same gate area. So when you have VIP starting in fireworks and monster truck just across the um, taxiway, you got to have that coordinated. So fire chief, uh, fire marshal, airport manager met today on that. So we're going to have the same time of thing with the fireworks, the VIP section. And yeah, they wanted to keep and that. And the fundraising for the fireworks again this year? Yes, very, doing a wonderful job. Once again, food vendors, we have all the crafters that come through. Annette and Gail are working on those very hard. And then when you get down to the nitty-gritty, everybody wants the best spots. So you're dealing with a variety of personalities there. Um, the special events that come in, the different uh, car show, um, Art Alliance, the different groups you deal with and their needs. Um, Porta toilets, the insurance, the promotion we're dealing with, um, interdepartment co uh, cooperation. Today I sent out uh, memos for the water taps that need to be set for the food vendors, the carnival, emergency, and then the staff that needs to come in and clean all that up. Those went out today. You run it by Dale. He approves it. Stay, you know, you got to be on top of personnel issues related to that. Sponsors, those all are coming in. You have to put them in the right category. You have to contact the banner company and make sure you get the banners up. If you don't get the banners up, they're not going to sponsor next year. Um, tents, chairs, um, hanger cleaning called on the back all that cleans it up to Wednesday. Once the planes are out, you got to have that vac on to sweep that uh, airport right up. Um, so, clean it sounds up. like you've done this before. And well, I'm trying to tell you the intensity of what three full time is, people uh, and a part time impressive. staff are going through, plus the other thing. Just kind of giving you. We might have the dates for Island Fest again. May 31st, June 1st, June 2nd, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Start at 4 on Friday, end at 4 on Sunday. I think everybody knows that. <laughs> hey, Tim? Yeah. There, There's a set budget on the uh, on the fireworks? Yes, eight thousand dollars. If we can exceed that with sponsorship before May third, we can meet with the finance director, the chairperson, treasurer type thing, go over it, see if we want to extend it. If, it's, if everything else is covered, going down the stretch, make sure all expenses are covered. Try to break even, okay, at please. least. Fireworks day is going to be Friday or Saturday. Saturday, ten, about ten fifteen. He likes to hold to about fifteen mm -hmm. minutes instead of doing it right at mm -hmm. ten o'clock. What's the entertainment? Entertainment. Uh, yeah. the the main group on uh, well, was beautiful entertainment all the way through. The paid entertainment we're bringing in would be Hype Syndicate. They're a DJ infused uh, pop band. So if you look up Hype Syndicate Detroit, you can see what kind of. For Friday? Friday? That's Friday? Yeah, Friday. And then before the fireworks is DR5. They're from the 70s right on up until now. Great band. Um, we have Howling Mercy, a local band, um, Andrew Johnson's band. They play uh, blues and classic rock. And then we have easy listening music in the hangar. It'd be Eddie Ed Peltz on Friday, four to seven, and Eddie O on Saturday from four to six thirty. 
You're doing your battle of the uh, bands too? Yeah, uh, all tradition, one of the neatest events in any festival in the whole area. The Jazzapalooza area high school bands, they come from all over. Nobody else does that. And it's been going on for probably over a decade. And then we need volunteers. If REC would like to help uh, festival, we've got the sign-up list at the Recreation Department. And then I'm going to transition from information to affordable care. What do those two have in common, I wonder? Hmm. I always have to have, well, what I like to do, I don't have to have it, I always try to have one rec staff person in the volunteer tent for continuity, checking the people coming, first aid, that type of thing. We'll find a way to do it, but um, the Affordable Care Act has limited our part-timers. They usually average around 32. We have to cut them back to 28. So Brian and Sue are losing hours, and because of insurance and things, we were told we had to cut them back, and it's not anybody here's fault. It's just the law. So you're losing probably 11 hours a week of staffing. Wow. And those some of those people this are key. This is Obamacare. This is, this is Obamacare. Wow. Yeah. Obama. Um, but Sue is um, really a, a mainstay there, and we're going to probably be losing her on the weekends, too, for the farm because of the van needs to keep running, the meals keep need to be delivered, and so Brian does that. So that's why I just kind of hit on that one together. Because we... So anybody that wants help in that information, so we'll find people, but... Just to make everyone clear on this, this is, um, doesn't go into effect till. I think 14, right? We have to be in place now. We have to be practicing right, that. Right, because what they, what they do is they go back to see, they didn't wait to the last minute to cut someone's hours. It actually goes back to see how far, you know, how many hours somebody works, your part-time workers. So that's why we're starting now. And so you have that 28 hours. But it, and that's just to be careful, because isn't the 32 the limit, or am I wrong? 28. 28, is it? Okay. To be, oh, I get it, to be part-time. Well, we're not alone in our community. It's, everybody's going to feel that one. Just you hear a lot about recreation. We'll need more recreation departments. We'll need more Let's have everybody now. Any work. questions about the ACA? Is that it then, Tim? Yes, that's it. Thank you. All right, thank you. Any old business? Any new business? Subcommittee updates. Mr. Melvesto. Anything you'd like to share? Uh, it's not a secret. I'm a, I'm a proponent of a kayak launch, and uh, I'd like to see as much support come out in uh, in support of a kayak launch, so that uh, we can verify and justify any uh, any future expenditures to install one. Um, other than that, I I think. That's it. That's it for myself this evening. All right. You want to expand a little bit on like like we actually have like a plan I think in place. We uh, we discuss and stuff. I think we're going to try to get this done this year, right? We are. We are. We are. <laughs> that is my that is my push, and Tim can tell you that I've been uh, I've been persistent on this. Uh, it seems that we have a preponderance of support for a kayak launch. In other words, we have people who are actively looking for a place to launch their kayak. We have a we have another uh, we have an outside uh, uh, business who is willing to support us and uh, push business our way in support of a kayak launch. So hopefully we can get this done this year. It's going to take a little bit of uh, finagling and uh, of course we want this in, at the end, we want this to be ADA uh, acceptable so that anybody can come down and, and use this launch, but we have to start somewhere, and we want to, we want to get some floating docks on the water so that people can come down to Water's Edge, launch their kayak, come back, and uh, uh, possibly use Sharkies, use, our, use the other facilities at, the, uh, at Water's Edge, and uh, just try to draw people together. It's, a, uh, it's one of those activities where... You either want to be with the group or you want to be, you know, solo. It, but that's strictly up to you. But uh, the more the more uh, people we can convince to come and uh, and use us and tie in with the other kayak launches in the area, uh, it just it just makes the whole thing a stronger, a larger, a larger program. So uh, Tim's in support of it. I know you're in support of it. I'm certainly in support of it. And I, I'd like to go uh, go from there. But uh, there is one thing. Uh, this past weekend, um, Bill Kostick and myself rode the bike paths, 
and we identified some areas that need uh, need some re some repair. Um, I think that the the bike paths are one of those areas on Gross Hill that, be it wreck, be it you know, be it bike path, be it whatever, uh, people really are using our paths, and they don't. A lot of people just don't realize how uh, attractive those paths are, uh, as far as you know, walking, walking the dog, your kids in strollers, the little kids on the bikes. So uh, I've got an idea coming forward. I have to try to bring this uh, between the uh, the rec committee and the uh, the bike path committee. I'd like to do something called walking the dog, whereby we can get together one weekend on a given day and have everybody come out, families, uh, kids in strollers, dogs on leashes, and uh, just get you know two, three, four hundred people on the bike paths to uh, identify the fact that we have a really special. Uh, opportunity here to uh, improve and expand our bike paths and the fact is that there's a lot of people out there using these and uh, hopefully we can get, put this together. Alright, and I just want to add one thing, the we, Water's Edge is the place where we like to have all these different things happen, you know, basketball, volleyball, swimming, golf, boating, kayaking, whatever, but the main area we're focusing on for this kayaking area is the South End which we even discussed years ago with the kayak group, the kayak connection came down there to um, the previous boards and stuff like this that seemed like the logical place. The north end is Wayne County property and that really seemed to be the difficult spot of or more problems of making it happen with the north end. But anyway, any questions from Tom about the kayaking or walking the dog? Anybody? All right. Thanks, Walt. Yep. Open Space and Greenways Committee. Shelke? Yes. Um, the, the committee meets on the second Tuesday of every month. Uh, it recently it meets on the second Tuesday of every month. Uh, at its last meeting, it met with the Bike Path Commission uh, for introductions and general conversation about mutual concerns and figuring out ways to collaborate with the township schools uh, and the township to enhance attracting new residents to the to Grozeal. Uh, the township will begin its spring construction of a new bike path along Horse Mill between uh, Meridian and East River almost immediately, I believe. Uh, the spring dump the junk weekend is May 1819. If you want to write that down, May 1819 for jump the dump or dump the junk. <laughs> That's at the airport, I believe, isn't it? Uh, no, DPS yard, right? Yeah, DPS, DPS yard. yard. Okay, at the DPS yard. And um, the committee uh, continues to, along with staff to consider purchases, but they're being very selective and there are no purchases pending at this time. The next meeting, I'm going to be in Canada, so Anne's going to attend in my place. All right. Any questions for Leah? All right. Thank you, Leah. All right. Golf committee update. Moreau, he's excused. He's enjoying himself in Myrtle Beach. <laughs> Uh, we've already discussed a few things, the pond dredging, the uh, golf course is open, talk about the park, the range and the netting, there's really nothing more or less to, you want to add some stuff? Well, we had a, a meeting with the uh, volunteers and Bill headed that up, we've got 18 volunteers. Okay. Do we need any more required or how are we doing with that? We can always use more volunteers. All right, please volunteer, please volunteer. Anything else then? All right, Maria. Well, one thing, one thing, Tim. Yes. Just as, as volunteers, uh, what, is, what are what are their uh, expected? Uh, they have to stay from um, mid-April to the end of August, and they have to work. Um, let's see, it's seven seven hours a week. And it, if they if they want to become a, uh, a volunteer, who are they they go through the rec department right at the main desk. We have the application form. Okay, thanks. Yep. Thank you. All right, Marina Swales. Just a real quick couple of photos. By the way, Tim, I got my golf passes. Thank you. I appreciate that. And our league was canceled. It's a swamp right now, but it won't be a swamp tomorrow. Uh, Marina, I'm just going to make a brief report on that marina. It's a beautiful place. There's a view of the, uh, when you're at the marina, the sun setting over the lamp. Just a beautiful sight. This is at the north end, and just because you mentioned it, Mr. Chairman, this is an area, you say, Wayne County owns. 
Correct. It would be just such a piece of cake to clear that out. We could walk, you could carry your kayak right in the water. I mean, it would just be, we could do that cheap and quick. I like the I like the plan for the AccuDoc at six grand. I hope we can do it, but this would be a real simple one. But that is at the north end, and as you said, well, Mike, you brought that up. Though I think actually years ago, I think actually Tim, when he did kayak classes, this is where they launched. Yes, it was right yeah, there, like Mike. So it is a proven point of entry. It would be, but just just to right. know, so people have a visual. Mm -hmm. North end. Uh, Tim said we did a, a maintenance walkthrough last month. There's the south end. I think that's the idea you're going for is maybe somewhere farther south of there, south of the drain. Away from our dock holders. Away from the it's a little six foot drop. Still could be done. I'd love to see it. Either yeah, location. Sure yeah, the right south. yeah, right down there at the very south end. Now that's the boneyard where we put all the uh, trailers and all the cradles in the summer, but right. other than that, yeah, wow, what a coordinated. It'd, be, it'd be great. So whatever finance is going to take, I'm sure we'll, we'll make it happen. Um, water's down. Water's way down this year. Everybody knows water's down. There's a pipe I've never seen before. That's where we get our water to, to water the golf course. Water's down so low, now we see that pipe. So we just got to be aware that the water is low. There's some of the guys doing the actual walkthrough for the maintenance. Your director, Tim, working real hard. There he is. It's, it's really low, you guys, so it's really, really low. Water, yeah, I'm a little concerned. I went down there today. Of course, there's a freighter down there today, but um, here's the, the Pier 1 docks. You can see the water is, wow, 12 to 18 inches below it was last year. It may affect our um, summer dockage. It may affect our uh, transient. Transient, dockage. definitely. Uh, we'll see. That's Mother Nature. Well, bring it up now, Mike. Now, that's, what about the, the dredging? Didn't we talk about dredging? Yeah, I have a call in, and the lady hasn't called me back. There's like four or five. I should have brought the diagram. But there's four different uh, agents you can call, and I'm not getting a call back. But the attorney general just came out with a ruling on the use of the trust funds, and I think that's what they were holding on because they probably didn't know why. I mean, I talked about our marina, what we were trying to do about the new, new seawall, and it's kind of shallow, and that we weren't we were prohibited when we first put it in. They wanted to leave the rock there for the wild, you know, the fish and that. Yeah, spawning thing. all that stuff. Yeah, but if. Carol sent out a, uh, and I saw it too, but she sent out a notice from Shooty, or I think it was Shooty, that um, the difference in where they could use the money. Can you use it for emergency? Can you not use it for emergency? So they were trying to figure that out, so I don't think they were, it was held up for a little while, because they wanted to try, Snyder wanted to push the money through real quick to right. save the tourist season. Right, just so everyone's aware, though, what Mike's talking about here, with, like with this being so low, is anything close to shore, is we might actually lose dock space, or for tra Meta Transient docks coming up here, because it's just not going to be deep enough. They're going to be hitting bottom and stuff, so... That's, that's we'll that's see. It's Mother Nature, but yeah. that, we would we'll just be aware. And the last point I want to make is that I think the summer dockage is nearly full. Yeah, there's there's larger boats on the waiting list. Five, three, five, five, four, two, and one other. There's four besides the maintenance so dock. We next do to have travel. a couple of available docks. Anybody that is interested, contact. The, the recreation, recreation department. Yep. We'd love to have 100 percent participation this summer. Thank you. If we had big enough docks, we would be. And Mike, we're, we're one of the fortunate ones because of this low water, because we actually have, like, the deep water right. things, right? So we that's, that's a plus water. other people don't there's, have. There's three other great boat clubs on the island, but they're in little inlets, and I, mean, I hope everybody has deep water, but we have deep water. Okay. All right, any questions for Mike? I can tell you right now, Mike, that the uh, Grosil uh, Yacht Club is, uh, is waiting for their uh, permits so they can proceed with dredging. Because at this point in time, about half of their fleet would be unable to be launched and uh, have access to open water. That being the the deep keel sailboats. Hmm. Yes. So where the, everybody is everybody is suffering at this point in time because of the low, low water. And it's usually they don't usually got to wait to which, whichever the wind blows if it's blowing in or out whatever. Yeah, east or west. The wind comes out of the west. Lake Erie goes toward Buffalo, and the Detroit River goes down. Right. Okay. And the winds are predominantly from the west. So. <laughs> of course. Thank you. Of course. All right. Any other questions for Mike? Uh, I just have to make one comment about the water being down. I was driving down East River one day when the wa wind was coming this way, and I thought, this water is not down low. It would have been splashing up onto me uh, because it was just coming up over the... Oh, really? Just hmm. one evening. 
Good. That was probably so that's kind of cool, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's snow like that. Yeah. All right. Centennial Farm, Woodward Ryan. Okay. Two things to announce, maybe three. He's what putting happened? up my thing for me. Because I know I trip right in front of me. There it is. Okay, Saturday, April 27th. That's this Saturday. There's a Grossiel Animal Shelter Fun Run. They're sponsoring it. It's a 5K and one mile run or walk with your dog. It's got directions there on the entry fees about the length of leash and that. Nice dogs, please. Last year it was a great big hit, so they've decided to do this annually. Um, it's getting bigger. It starts at the Centennial Farm at 9 and 10.30. Um, this, uh, the proceeds for this goes to Tails to take care of our animals. Tails is funded by sponsors and staffed by volunteers. Julie uh, Cordes, our animal control officer, is asking for about eight volunteers, if anybody can call her. She's in charge of the whole thing. Um, Island Animal Clinic, where I'm going to have two people there that are going to give free toenail trims and have a raffle for a dog walking basket with all the things in it you would like for walking a dog. Um, all the proceeds from that will go to Tails. And I want to remind everybody about Sandra Bondar's spring cleanup, May 11th, 10 to 2, on a Saturday. They're going to be fixing up mostly the equestrian area, barns. It's good that they moved the up because last year when they did this, it was like the dead of summer and yeah. those poor dogs were... Yeah. <laughs> those dogs are barking. Yeah. We got lots of people. People are even borrowing dogs to go on this. It's a big thing. And that'll go with your dog more. All right. And I think, yeah. like, the, the animal shelter always could use dog food, cat food, oh, yeah. um, litter. They're, they're specific about what they like. All right. They got, give them a call on yet. Right. Or something like that, whatever it is. All right. Anything else, Elena? Nope. That's it. Any questions? Uh, Helena? Yes. Are there also other animal and dog treats? Are animal, uh, people and dog treats at the, at the, uh, fest, at the, Event. There's for sure dog treats because I know my staff's bringing some. Um, I don't know. I thought I saw that they were selling it people treats, but I don't know. Yeah, they have water. I know. Oh, that's it. Oh, okay. Tails isn't selling anything then. Okay. All right. So once again, so there's an avenue for somebody to start doing that, right? Yep, there you go. Volunteers needed though. We need some volunteers. Right. All right. Any other questions? All right, moving on. Thank you, Helena. Airport Recreation Area, Myring. Anything to report today? Uh, Giza's uh, soccer season's up and running. Uh, seems like they're going to have a very successful season again. Uh, the U15 lacrosse team uh, will be playing their third game this uh, weekend at Belleville. Um, the team is coached by a former player, Eric Gorm, who's a... Uh, Doing an outstanding job from all the feedback we've been getting from it. So cool. that's about it. I think that there's an alumni lacrosse game. This I think it's at the high school. All at over the same Island, time Fest, as the yeah. Island Fest. Yeah. Oh, same weekend as Island same Fest. Same weekend as Island Fest. All right, so May thirty first, June first, June second. I don't have the details. I just know that's when they're having the alumni. Typically, it's on Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so probably yeah. the first maybe. Are there any questions for Greg? Are we going to have a yes, we're going to have a meeting before Island Fest, aren't we? Yes. So yes. we'll mention it. We'll, twice. we'll mention it we'll then. We'll have the final okay. details. Yeah. All right. John, you got a question for Greg? Yep. Greg, we still have the old time baseball schedule for Island Fest. All right. Yeah, we do. <laughs> Very cool. Hmm. It'll be a good time. Everybody should come out. Yeah. It's a great sport. Everybody will have a blast. It's very entertaining. All right. Cheer on your local uh, legend. So we're not talking a senior baseball game. We're actually talking old-time baseball, right? 1863, I believe, is the rules we play by. That's real old. All right. Thank you very much, Greg. <laughs> That's real old. All right. My favorite report, once again, senior citizens. Miss Yops. I only have a few repeats this evening. Pinacola first and third Thursdays at 1 o'clock at Centennial Farm. The senior club meets the second and fourth Tuesdays at the farm at 11.15 with coffee and dessert.
Come and join us for f uh, fellowship and meet some new people. The Cinco de Mayo party is sponsored by the Recreation Department. It is Wednesday, May the 8th at 12.30 p.m. at Centennial Farm. $10 advanced reservations at Water's Edge office or call 675-2364. And Tim mentioned that the new channels program guide for the Recreation Department will be out soon. Be sure to read it and retain it for all of the department programs. Thank you. Thank you, Ethel. Any questions for Ethel? Ethel, how many more years do I have to go before I can qualify for the seniors? 55 and up. Okay, thank you. You got to show your ARP card? So how many more yeah. years? Why? Well, I have to do a map. Yeah. <laughs> I think we need to find a new name because most seniors don't feel like what they call right. seniors. Right, exactly. right. The mature citizens. So it's the new 40 now? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think things would be different. I know. All right, thank you, Ethel. Schools and Senior Olympics. Mr. Conroy, you got anything to add to that? Yes, I do. Uh, Tim, first of all, do we have a sponsor business that's going to help at the information booth this year? To, to help man the information? We haven't heard yet. No. Okay, because that's usually, helped. Usually it's the bank, right? Yes. Yep. It's always helped in the past. And, and because of that Affordable Care Act, I hope all of us and we go recruit some folks to be volunteers. Uh, at the information booth. It's, it's a lot of fun, and we always are appreciative of all the help we got over there. Right. <clears throat> um, summer Olympics, Summer Senior Olympics, uh, is happening July 29th through August 2nd. Uh, applications are available at the Rec Department and Centennial Activity Center. <clears throat> Ping pong efforts on this island are going great guns. We've uh, had as many as 15 people uh, at our at our ping ponging. <clears throat> hey, didn't you have a, just a newspaper spread recently uh, about ping pong? There was an article as well as a video. <laughs> Thanks to Pam uh, Frucci and, and E. L. Conley, it was a lot of fun. Uh, thanks to Christine and Jim Byington, the, the, our latest uh, ping pong table donation uh, efforts. Um, again, amazing efforts volunteering with Tim's group as well as uh, the people that uh, help me. I How many tables do we have now? There's a ton of them back there. <laughs> I believe we're rebuilding them. <laughs> we, we are working on repairing them. We've got about seven right now. We look like a ping pong warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> we're ready for that emporium to start up. <laughs> Bob Firmstone came and said he's going to be uh, combining two of them that are damaged and make one good right. one or something. Yeah, we'll be doing that. Um, <laughs> just to sh highlight uh, what's, what youth are capable of doing, uh, in this past News Herald, there was an article about a Trenton uh, resident, 17 years old, named Dan or Gabrielle Heron. She received a Congressional Silver Medal and Friend of the Refuge Award last year. She was recently appointed to a statewide council focused on getting young Michiganders more involved in outdoor activities. And I want to I keep on encouraging uh, teenagers, uh, high school kids to become uh, part of our environment as well as uh, joining us. We can always use new ideas. Uh, and that's all for now. All right. Thank you, John. Any questions for John? One question. John. Yes. John. Yes. Uh, you have an example of the uh, events of the Senior Olympics? An example? Sure. Yes, I have the whole pink flyer right here. It ranges from uh, euchre to uh, bocce ball to frisbee toss to uh, to basketball free throw shooting and ping pong. <laughs> every, every kind of event you can think of, a baking contest as well. <laughs> Can I get on that one? <laughs> you just want to be a oh, judge. Yeah. Well, the, 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 it's, judge. It's hosted. It's going to be hosted by the city of Ecorse, uh, but we all have events here on Gross Seal. We're sponsoring the, um, the pickleball. Will be here as well as tennis at the tennis center, and uh, there'll be uh, there'll be events happening uh, all over the Down River area. Taylor has the ping pong, and I believe golf will be played in Taylor as well. Right. And we'll do on the day of uh, opening, we'll also, we'll, uh, Grozeal will handle the softball throw, too. Oh, very good. Well, there you go. So we expect some payback for ping pong, right? Come on, come on. Right? I've already right. warned him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this one guy comes over and mops up. He does. <laughs> He's been part of our doubles. <laughs> uh, He's 70-something. He just comes in and cleans the clock. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> He's good. 
We've really got to videotape this or something. Thanks, John. Is that true, John? That's what you told me. He's very good. Yeah. All right. Thank you, John. Yeah. All right. Playscape and uh, Parkway, East River Road ending, Hainer Magron. Hello. Um, here's my report for the Playscape. Uh, Tim Rooney, uh, Dwayne Covington, who is a, um, I guess, a playground specialist, mm -hmm. uh, from S&D Field Services, and I met in mid-March at the Playscape. Uh, the inspection lasted over an hour, and Dwayne made a list of about 14 items that need attention at the Playscape. Um, some of them are rather small, nothing really super glaring, um, nothing's falling apart right now. Uh, but these items will need to be taken care of soon, and Tim will have his crew on that. Uh, Dwayne was also very complimentary of how well the playscape has been maintained. Considering that it's over 20 years old, he was astounded at how well it's it's kept up. Because a lot the of the structure, right? The structure is is he's it was very complimentary, and he said many communities just got rid of a lot of them because they just were not as well maintained. So we're fortunate that ours is still here, and. Um, there's, do I need to go over the list of all four things? That's up to you guys. I don't, all right. It's, 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 one thing I want to talk about the list is, is for this com the commissioners, is there anything that's going to be a lot of cost? Because of the location of the playscape and stuff like this and the vandalism and stuff like this, I don't, I don't think this commission wants to be putting a lot of money into right. that right there. What's the biggest ticket things that we got to fix there? Probably I'd say the biggest ticket thing would be to remove the spiral slide. Because um, it's not under, it's not in code, but we it, right. It's it needs so to go. it's either remove it, not have a slide, or replace it with another one. Or we're no, we're removing it. We're just remove okay. it. Okay. And um, that's not the other two slides that it would be on the north side. But those tornado slides, they've had a lot of problems over the years. We've had to fill in gaps. You remember the about maybe 10 years ago the the ties on I mean, kids jackets okay. were getting caught we always have to watch that and a lot of tornado slides aren't used anymore or they're totally different so probably the best thing instead of spending four thousand is to make that an all look out with uh, okay awesome mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. and the rest is small things replacing a board um there was like one of the things, the, the new standard is that you only, in each bay on a swing set, you only have two swings. We have four. So you have to take down True. two. That's right. the code or something? Yeah, it's code. all changed. It keeps changing every year, those playground. And then mm -hmm. had entrapment sizes. I mean, they're not in typical spots, but he said, you know, probably nobody would ever even come near this, but let's get what it picked up. Right. heads getting smaller? I mean... <laughs> But no, it's, it's just, it's just entra yeah, but things that they considered entrapment that it's changed over the years. It, huh. It's, but it, no, nothing super glaring, but okay. just things that need attention. Okay. And but yeah, probably the biggest thing is just to take out that slide. Okay. Mm. Did, Any did by any chance they give a uh, an expected you know life expectancy of what we have? I mean, how many more years we can expect to see it in? I know we already. Well, have we have literature when they first were when the moms and committees were going around to the school. They they said if you make twenty years, you're doing well, and it was two, uh, 1991. So it's about twenty. It'll be twenty two years this October. So going going forward from this date, every every year we get is a bonus. I see. And we won't see wood playscapes anymore. They they're a thing of the past. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now everything is metal, plastic coated. Right. Uh, okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, on um, the East River Road end, um, today at 5.30, Doug Thiel from the Grossiel Land Conservancy, Trustee Peter Kantz, Tim Rooney, myself, and Lisa, who's a naturalist from Cranbrook. Lisa Powell. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Um, met today at the East River Road End site to talk about plantings and that slope and some possible improvements that will be made in that area. So we did a walk around on looking at the slope. What they want to do on that the slope that was cleared, put low plantings or maybe more ground cover so that when you're standing up at the road end and you're looking out, you're not going to get anything blocked. So 
So any any plantings that will be done will be low to the ground. And and that will also help with any erosion on that slope. And make it look nicer. Too. And, and make it look nice. I mean, so, well, one of the things that's already been done is, who planted that grass, Tim? Uh, Kyle Moore. Okay. Yep. And it's growing. I mean, it's so <laughs> cold, but there's grass there, which is also helping for erosion with all the rain we've had. So the more plants that get in there soon, then that also helps with erosion. Um, we talked about the different planting options to make it look nice and right and help with erosion. We walked around the site. Um, we went the area that's when you go down the stairs to the right, and then we also went on that area that's up over to the left, where there was like a big. Well, the railroad used to come across the big cement slab that kind of overlooks the river mm -hmm. with the big metal sign. Right, that like railroad grade, I think that was it, maybe. Um, we we walked around that, just kind of kicked around a couple of ideas of things that could possibly be done, and uh, Lisa is going to develop a list of plants that can be gotten and that would work in that area for that kind of soil. No, who, who's Lisa with again, you guys? She's a naturalist and she does uh, oh, planting. She? So she like, is she consulting with for, for the conservancy, basically, or something? They had a project like in the thoroughfare. You probably know more about that. Oh, I well, she, oh, so I, yeah, she I didn't realize, but she's working, she's working with the conservancy. There's an eagle project that is being developed up on thoroughfare and she is working with one of our Eagle Scouts candidates um, to come up with some plants because they want to make like okay. a butterfly garden. Okay. Then they also talked to her to look at this site to see what would work for that, that slope to you know, make it make it look nice and and it's yeah well and there's there's certain plants that will work, certain ones that won't. But she's going to make a list and submit that to Doug Deal in about two weeks, right? Are we yeah, are, with, are we confident are the conservancy is going to, you know, take a little charge there and, and handle yes. that? Yes. Okay. Um, Definitely. Um. It, and if I got this right, Tim, Doug Deal will be ordering the plants. You're coming up with some funding, yes? Yeah, we have a donation. We have. Right, I'm going to confirm it, but yes, we okay. have a donation, five hundred dollar donation. Oh, okay. Because the board donation. was pretty clear as we move ahead, okay. you know how you're spending money at that site. Mm -hmm. So we're going to keep them updated and try to get some more donations also. And if we need some money, we can come to REC. Or, but right now it's a donation we're working off of. Um, we we were just kind of walking around the area, looking looking at possible things that can be made improvements. Talked about a spot maybe for a bike path or bike rack. And um, so I, so know, what, just what kind of kicking it around, ideas. Yeah. Uh, looking, looking at the site. I mean, it's amazing just how much has been done in a year. The sun Since came out when we were down there, and it just Lisa goes, um, "God, that's beautiful." Whose idea was this? And we all looked at Peter Cans. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was standing there and he was he did the whole walkthrough, but it was kind of his dream. And, right. and we all pointed at him and said, "Yep, this is it." It was beautiful tonight mm -hmm. down there when it was dreary all day, and that sun came out and was sparkle. It was all cleaned up. And so, are we prepared for summer now for this park and stuff like that? I mean, as far as opening hours, it's going to be sun. It's going to be just daylight hours, right? Right. We got we got sign posted down there. The I mean, sign is posted down there. It was posted last fall okay. with the rules for yeah. the East River Road and the the gate that had was hung that That's hung through the winter is gone, so people can go down there. Yeah, oh. Brian was down Monday and cleaned up a lot of glass that came up during the winter. There's still a lot of cleanup. The the county drain that's broke off of that big cement slab that overlooks that needs to be going down. Go down there and clean all that up. That needs to be done. It's still pretty. I fresh. wish we would get a name for this already. I'm really tired of the Parkway East River Road ending. Oh. We need a name. Tom, think of a name. Hmm. Maybe we should sponsor Sunset Beach. Contest but it or really is nice to have. Um, excuse me. Oh, sorry. What? No, I mean we talked with the start of the world. They, they were going to get involved with the name or something like that too, right? Have we heard anything back from them? No, well, they're available. Um, one thing that they did bring up, um, you know, when you park there, there's kind of that—not a cliff, but that embankment that goes down there. 
If you look to the south, there's a beautiful grassy, not a beautiful, but it's a grassy berm. We talked about um, checking with Dale Wayne County to extend that berm over to the big oak tree, but feather it into the oak tree because the conservancy is worried about hurting that big tree. But a berm would be beautiful. I think we could get some donations. So that would be the, I think that's the number one thing right now that we talked right. about. And what, do you, what would that accommodate you guys? Just when you're parking there, protect how, you from how, how many? Just one car? Two cars? Oh, it's more of a buffer between the, the hill and the where you're parking along there. It'd be more of a buffer instead of, because okay. the county's pretty uh, tough on putting any kind of fencing. They usually like a guardrail, and that's really not too appealing when you go by. And another key to that, bringing up the historical society, they want to maintain that view. Their property sets up a little higher, and they want to be able to host events. And Doug Thiel and Peter said that they want to keep that clear so you can see, and the berm would be perfect for that. Okay. Tim, can we do uh, possibly some sort of a fundraiser uh, in in choosing a name for that? Yeah, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm, you know, do something. We we need a name. Let's uh, get the entire island uh, uh, involved in it and some sort of a fundraiser to. Uh, That'd be nice. Perhaps. You know what? Maybe this is something that could co coincide with Island Fest That's or something. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Maybe we can just throw a sign up there or something, mm -hmm. even at the information tent, to, to post ideas of a naming or something, you guys. I'm well, what I, was, what I was looking at is, you know, if it was some sort of a fundraiser, you know, a buck, two bucks, something like that, you put your name in a hat, and, uh, okay. you know, we'll do a, you'll be able to use the money for landscaping right. improvements, and uh, then we'll uh, have a selection committee, and we'll go through all the names, and... I kind of like it. I like yeah. it, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Five bucks, name the park. Hey, hey, keep it, let's, you know, let's go a hundred dollars, <laughs> and you know you're getting the name. <laughs> so, well, well, I mean, just, way road ending's not cutting it right now. Right, but if, you know, it just, you know, for a dollar or two dollars, you put your name in a hat, you put a number on it, so that I don't know who you are, but uh, we come up with some names, and then to be a selection committee, and go through it, and who's ever uh, number on the back of the tag of that name would... Uh, there would be a donation in their name to uh, for for plantings. What do you think? I just 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 a you know top of the head type of off the top of my head type of deal. Mr. Chair, yes, sir. There's, there's another way to look at it: sell a naming rights. Maybe a bank or a business would they be happy to donate. We call it Ford Park. Whatever. I mean, there's you know what yeah. you, you know what that's not really a bad idea. I mean, Comerica did it. You know, just a thought. Sure, I mean, there's different ways to look at it. Yeah. If you don't, if you don't, you know, kind of like pop them out there for discussion. I mean, I don't know. But what do you think, Andy? I think, Andy, you got you got some uh, ideas out there. What do you think about that? Um, I so highest bidder gets it. Highest bidder gets, highest bidder gets right. the name. Yeah, the uh, name the. Uh, well, we we have to. Well, we yeah. have to be careful when we name it, though, right? But well, we uh, still get to. Yeah. You know, edit. Animal Who? Island Clinic. Oh, yeah. Look for out. my one dollar. Whoa, yes. <laughs> I can see it now. <laughs> I can see it now. Hungry Howie's Lookout. <laughs> <laughs> no, it would be, uh, I, you know, involve, involve the entire island into the naming of the, uh, or whomever. This group. We can well, at least it, it moves the forward so we can get right. a name. Yes, yeah, exactly. That's the most important thing. All right, anything more, Ann? Um, no, I, that's all I have. Any more questions? That's all I have. Thank you. Any questions for Ann? <clears throat> Anybody? All right. Extended public comment. Any Senate public comment? Sandy, Kathy, anything? All right. Individual commissioner comments. We'll start off with you, Tim. Anything you want to add? No, I'm good. I just want to thank the commission for all their support. We talk about volunteers. I see all of you guys and other groups volunteering all the time. So. Thank you, and I just wanted to, um, we're real busy. I want to thank Annette and Mark, our, my two full-timers, uh, Brian, Sue, Gary, and Gail's doing a one, uh, Gail Hager's really doing a bang-up job with Annette in the office with all the different things going on, so I want to uh, thank her for her work, but just, they're doing a great job, and the volunteers that have come on board, they're showing up on time, they're eager to work, and We've got some other people involved. I just want to thank them because it's it's more than just a director or the full time people. It's the volunteers, the commissions, and thank Kathy for all her work on the kayak, putting up with me on different things with that. But I appreciate all your effort on that. I truly do. And Sandy with the Equestrian Club, they're a great group. So just you want just to thank saying you. it because they're in here. No, I know, but, I, <laughs> but I'll say it. I'll, 
Anybody else? All right, thanks, Tim. John, any? Yes, Okay. A uh, little shout out to uh, Pam Frucci. She is the Rotary Club Citizen of the Year. Uh, I know there'll be a. Congratulations. I think it's May 9th when the uh, dinner is at the uh, Grocery Yacht Club. When is that again? I'm, I think it's May, May 9th. 9th. I'm not positive on that one, but uh, it's, it's not too not too distant future from now. Um, we also have uh, I'm, I'm associated right now with a uh, fundraiser this weekend, Saturday, April 27th. It's a special Detroit Blues Review. And it's going to be held in Dearborn at the place called the New Place Lounge. It's to help Henry Ford Community College and its radio station, WHFR. Uh, come one, come all. There's only a $5 cover, and it should be a terrific night. All right. Thank you. Uh, Ethel, anything more to add? Nothing. Ann, anything else? Any, anything? Um, I'm good. Leah? Uh, yes, I would. In, in, um, I'm a member of the Grosso Musicale, and we sponsor a... Uh, we offer scholarship every year, and the, uh, the tryouts are the 29th at 2.30 at the high school, and I urge you to contact the counseling department for an application. Uh, the only requirement is that you're going into some kind of music after high school uh, and that uh, you are a Girls Hill resident. doesn't matter what school you're going to as long as you're a Girls Hill resident. Excellent. Thank you. Greg, anything to add? Not at this time. Mike? No. Helena? No. Tom? No. All right, the only thing I want to add is please volunteer in the community. It makes rec go around, makes everything go around, so please volunteer. Um, and we have a motion to adjourn for executive session, please. So moved. Second. John and Helena second it. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right, we're going to close out right now for executive session. Thank you.